Texas has fallen over the Big A in Anaheim, California, and with it, some rain. Yes, we have rain in Southern California for the first ever Freedom Bowl matchup between the Texas Longhorns and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Well, uh, of course, Chuck Long is, is just a super quarterback. Uh, Chuck uh, is uncanny uh, in regards to his accuracy. Uh, he's not a pitcher book passer, but he always puts the ball on target. Uh, Texas plays great man-for-man -man defense, have tremendous speed in the secondary. Uh, the field's a little wet today, and I'm not for sure about our footing, how good we can cut. Uh, if we can cut uh, precisely, uh, then we should have a pretty good day throwing the ball. Uh, of course, the big problem is to give Chuck the protection he needs, but only Gill is hurt. He's got two bad ankles. He's got a bad neck. Uh, he's had a bruised kidney. We're going to play on as long as he can play and then bring in a, a little walk-on guy by the name of Rick Bayless, who was really the star of the Hawaii victory, and uh, and go from there. So uh, if Gill can play, wonderful. If he can't, we'll probably have to rely more on Chuck Long's passing. You almost feel that Hayden Fry wants you to bring out the violins and play a chorus of blues or something for him, but I have a feeling he'll get his team ready. You see the weather conditions at game time. It's 55 degrees, and the skies, obviously, the rain uh, intermittent, and it's down to just a very slight drizzle at the moment. And the wind's variable. They should not be a factor if the conditions hold up for the next three hours or so. And it's really a darn shame because it's been a positively magnificent week here in Southern California. Uh, the last three days, the temperature has reached the low 70s during the afternoons. As you see, our camera in the uh, Iowa locker room now as the players start to move out and head for the playing field for the player introductions and the coin toss, which will come at the 50-yard line just momentarily. But it has been delightful weather. And um, wouldn't you know it that on the inaugural of the Freedom Bowl that the rains would fall early in the afternoon and it's been cloudy and certainly would keep this crowd down. They had sold in the neighborhood of 30,000 tickets for this football game uh, prior to today and they had hoped to have a sizable gate sale uh, with some very good publicity in recent days by the local television stations and the papers but I would think that probably the weather has been a deterrent as I suggested Jack. California is a very spoiled people Sam you know we're used to having that sun about 360 days of the year and we're also used to having temperatures at the low end of 65 and the high end of about 100 and normally in December for us, we're in the low to mid to high 70s at different times of the year in our winter months. So the day is very, very unexpected. So Hayden Fry has bought his, brought his Iowa team all the way out here to um, Anaheim with the hopes of uh, winning a bowl game and erasing uh, the drudgery of a couple of losses to Michigan State particularly and then won the following week in Minnesota that cost him any hopes at all, as you see Hayden Fry and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Any chances at all of going to the Rose Bowl? And they were very much in the hunt until they had lost that Michigan State game. They are lined up now, uh, coming out of the uh, right side of uh, the field. Hayden Fry, having coached previously at West Texas State and SMU, happy as can be at Iowa. And might we also suggest to you that this will be a partisan Iowa crowd. Texas brought just a couple of hundred people along, claiming that this coming the day after Christmas certainly in inhibited the number of people who might want to come. And now the Longhorns coming out of the dugout, dugout on the other side of the field and passing through their cheerleaders to a rather mixed reception here from, as I indicated, partisan Iowa crowd. As they send a man in motion to the near side, and here's Todd Dodge looking downfield, delivers a pass, it's intercepted! Stoops has it at the 35, working his way across field to the 25, to the 20, and inside the 20 to the 19. And look at Iowa now at the Texas 19-yard line. They've done nothing with their first two possessions. Here's Owen Gill at the 10. First down and goal of the six. On second down and six as Texas is looking for Chuck Long to throw the ball. Play action pass. He is rolling to his left. Throws it in the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Iowa. Number 34, Jonathan Hayes. Station is just such a perfectionist when the offense is on the field. He's working on his technique on the sideline. Here's a give, and Johnson brought down at the 29 yard line. And yeah, you guessed it, it was number 36, Larry Station. It is third down and two. And the partisan Iowa crowd trying to get their team going. They've got a few thousand people who came up here from Iowa City, and they got a man wide open, the tight end down the far sideline, the 30, the 25, the 20, and out of bounds is Mike Flagg. And once the offense gave them a second opportunity, Iowa scored, and they're about to do it again here with a second down at the 11-yard line. Interesting on defense, the only stat that where Texas is better than Iowa is in the secondary and against pass defense. But right now, that's exactly what's killing them. Second down and nine from the 11. Long play action pass. He delivers a ball in the end zone. Flag touchdown, Iowa! Here's 
the play that he needs. Dodge to keep the drive alive. And Iowa's blitzing. Dodge rolling out to the right. Looking downfield, throws the ball, and it is touchdown, Texas! So here come the Hawkeyes now trying to do something about it. It's 14 to 7. They still have the lead on first down long. Throws the ball across the field, the 35 yard line. The catch is made. There's a first down to the 40. Helverson is split wide to the left now on second down and 10 from just shy of the 40. And long with a short drop, delivers the ball in an out pattern. Helverson's got it, and he's got the first down as he breaks down the sideline and breaks a tackle at the 35, the 30, and out of bounds. Yeah, doesn't quite make it. And a dive play, touchdown Iowa. Diving for the touchdown was, I believe, Eddie Polite, number 26. Let's see who had the ball. Was it Polite? I believe it was. Yes, sir. So they get the touchdown out of, or Bush was it? I think it was Fred Bush. I no, think it I... might have been Fred Bush. He... It is fourth down and goal to go, and there's no question Texas is going to go for it. They trail 21-7. 6.45 to go here in the second quarter, and they need this touchdown now to get back in the game. Power on. Dodge rolling out, throws it wide open. Touchdown to Harris. What a great call by Akers. And this certainly is most makeable. Morshell spots it. Ward kicks it. It's up. It is good. And it's first down right on the 50-yard line. So Iowa with plenty of time to open up into at least a six-point lead and maybe a ten-point lead before halftime. Minute 38 to play, and Long sets him out with a receiver to the left and one to the right, and he's back to pass. A straight drop this time. Delivers the ball over the middle, and it is caught in a comeback pattern by Happel, who's having himself quite a day. Well, let's see what happens here. Long will spot for him. There's the placement. The spot, the kick by Nickel is up, and it is perfect. So we end the first half on that note. A 27-yard field goal by Tom Nickel of the Iowa Hawkeyes. And it enables them to go off at halftime with a seven-point lead. And with these two great defensive units, it's hard to imagine. We've scored 41 points in the first half. It's 24-17, the Hawkeyes over the Longhorns. Our halftime activities here at the Freedom Bowl will begin right after this. The University of Iowa. It's a major university with a top academic reputation. Here's why. Our professors enjoy teaching undergraduates. It's important to have professors who care about teaching. International education at Iowa means study abroad, exchange agreements, students from 90 other countries on campus. It's an international university. Career opportunities have really opened up for me here. Law school is next for me. I realized performing with the Joffrey Ballet wouldn't last forever. That's why I came to the University of Iowa, to prepare for the future. Research is important at Iowa. I like that. It helps my classes become more interesting, even exciting. Professors who care, an international university, career opportunities, a place to prepare, where learning is exciting. That's the University of Iowa. And they begin here with a slot to the right. Long play action pass, looking over the middle, throws one downfield. He's got a man wide open at the 40. The 45, the 50, it's Jonathan Hayes. Nickel attempts a 35-yard field goal. There's a placement, and the kick by Tom is up. It looks to be good. It is good. So Nickel now with a 35-yard field goal, and back-to-back -back boots at that has given the Iowa Hawkeyes a 10-point lead over Texas. There's a timeout on the field. It's 27-17. The Hawkeyes over the Longhorns will be back after this. Second down and three from the eye formation, or is the deep back in the eye, and Dodge turns, gives it to his up back. And it's Johnson for a first down across the 35. Fumble the ball, and they rule it is Iowa's football. Johnson had the first down, and I'm just to say, about to say something nice about it. First down to the Texas 34-yard line for the Hawkeyes. Play action for Chucky Long. He wants it all. He fires it down the sideline. It's caught. Touchdown, Iowa. We're back live. Third down and six again. Dodge base with now enormous pressure and dragged down all the way back at the 48-yard line. And the man who got to him was Jeff Ross. 
Of course, everything they do tonight is a record because it's the inaugural bowl game. Long wants it all. Downfield, and it's caught. Touchdown, Iowa. Unbelievable. Harris, the tight end, in motion. And again, pressure and down. Dodge goes back at the 13. And that time, Hap Peterson is having himself quite a ball game as a backup defensive nose tackle. The ball is on the 37-yard line of Texas. Iowa in possession. And the Longhorns with the nickel back using the five defensive backs. They could use seven back there. It might not help tonight. The way Long's throwing the ball. Here he is again, dancing around. Now he's going to run with the ball. 30-25. And slides to the 20 and gets the first down. So they spot the ball at the four-yard line. Nonetheless, Iowa has the ball with a first down and goal to go. Looking for more, and they already lead here 41-17. Here's Long back to pass. Looking for his fifth touchdown pass, and it's there to Helverson. Touchdown, Iowa. Nobody has done that this year. The most scored against them this year was the 37 by AM in their last game. And there's a fumble, and Iowa, I believe, has the football. They do indeed. Jeff Drost recovered the fumble of Terry Orr. It is second down and short yardage. And the give on a dive play. No. Play action pass and a touchdown. He fooled me. I thought he'd given to the running back. And he throws with a touchdown to Jonathan Hayes. And a school record six touchdown passes in one game by Chuck Long. And Hayden Fry loves it. And Freddie Akers has to admire it. I'll tell you one thing, Sam. You better get out your flip card because we're going to see names of guys we haven't, we don't know exist out there. Believe me. <laughs> it's unbelievable what's happened to this football game. I uh, it may be repetitious to say it, but uh, it looked competitive. And Texas had come back in the second quarter, and you just had to assume that a team of this quality, even though they ended the year on the note they did, would uh, gut it up in the second half, come out here, and certainly play respectively. But I don't think anybody in their wildest dreams believe that Iowa would outscore them 31 nothing in the third quarter and have no turnovers, Jack. Dodge is going all the way to quarterback, and he remains in there. The rain continues to come down. He throws this one up for grabs, and it's intercepted by number 90, Doug Burrell, a sophomore out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Beat us. And, uh, and so he defended the fact that they came out here 7-4-1, having accepted the invitation at 6-4-1. And, and I think you make an excellent point. Uh, with the competitiveness of college football today, there's no shame. And so there are a lot of schools that love to be 7-4-1 when it's all over. And Long now just running out the clock, giving off to the running back Kevin Harmon. And uh, we are at 30 seconds and counting. And this game is about to go in the record books. And... Of course, there's no way of telling uh, who will be here next year for the Freedom Bowl. Um, it's been a great week with you, Jack, and I appreciate the time. Uh, of course, you live out here in Southern California. Thank you for chauffeuring me around. I appreciate that. <laughs> Don't ever let it happen again, <laughs> No, <Sam>. sir. <laughs> no, sir, I will. Bring my own chauffeur next time. And good luck at the Aloha Bowl. I'm Thank sure you. you'll have a good time over there. This one is history. And while I'm at it, just a personal note, I... You know, when you're away for the holidays, it's always nice to have family and friends, and I'm indebted to Ronnie and Carolyn Baker and Ronnie Ridge for making it like home for me out here during Christmas, and to our great crew and our support crew here, as I mentioned, Chuck Panama, Jim Pels, Charles Fisher, and John Grohall. Tammy Rippey and the rest of our production crew who are all away from home for the holidays and uh, hoping that you enjoyed the telecast, uh, even if you were a Texas fan. The football game is history. The final score, the inaugural Freedom Bowl, Iowa 55, the Texas Longhorns 17. We'll be right back after this.